river renewed. Portlanders love their Willamette River. Right here, you can't even tell you're in the city. That's the nicest part to me, is you can go up this side of Ross Island here. And you got trees on both sides of you. You got eagles, you have heron. It's, that's beautiful. It's having a little bit of an oasis in the city, really. Our whole community is linked to the rivers, not just the Willamette, but to the Columbia also. I think the Willamette is beautiful. And uh, it seems that uh, all life kind of revolves around the Willamette, the river here. And uh, it's a good place to fish. I think the Willamette is Portland. <laughs> True. <laughs> it's like a like a vein or an artery that just goes right down through the middle of our city. Portland was born on the banks of the Willamette River. The river nurtured the growing city with its clean water, abundant salmon runs, wildlife, recreation, and commerce. As Portland's population and industry grew, the Willamette River became heavily polluted. But today, a community that once turned its back on the Willamette has launched a river renaissance to renew the river that flows through the heart of Portland. The river's current problems have their roots in the way the city was developed. In the late 19th century, Portland citizens used the Willamette to dispose of their sewage and industrial waste. It didn't take long to see the disastrous results. By 1930, the Willamette River in Portland was dangerously polluted. In the 1930s, the Willamette River was, in essence, like many rivers in, in many cities throughout the world, was a, an open sewer. You know, people, industries, everything went into the Willamette River because rivers kind of take things and take them somewhere else, make it someone else's problem. Portland citizens began to clamor for a cleaner Willamette. They demanded modern sewage treatment and they got it in 1952 with the opening of Portland's Columbia Boulevard Wastewater Treatment Plant. Before there was a treatment plant, Portland sewers simply channeled wastewater directly into the Willamette River and the Columbia Slough through outfall pipes. In the early 1950s, the city changed the collection system to divert sewage to the treatment plant. The result was a swift and noticeable improvement in water quality. But Portland still has a combined sewer system. The same pipes that collect sewage also collect stormwater runoff. When it rains, the combined sewers fill to capacity and some of the sewage overflows to the Willamette River. These events are called combined sewer overflows, otherwise known as CSOs. Over the years, Portland built new streets and sidewalks and other hard surfaces as the city expanded. Less stormwater soaked into the ground and more flowed into the sewer system. The volume of combined sewer overflows grew. The group Willamette Riverkeeper has been monitoring river health for many years. Well, CSOs are a problem because we get uh, far too much raw sewage and other pollution that ends up in the Willamette River at uh, high rains and uh, significant flows. And it, 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 it can affect the health of people that use the river. Uh, it can affect the biological community that lives and passes through this section of river. So it's, it's something that is really quite harmful. In 1972, Congress passed the Clean Water Act. The federal government allocated money to protect water quality and to expand and improve sewage treatment plants. Although the Willamette River benefited from the Clean Water Act, Portland's combined sewers continued to overflow during rainy weather. In 1991, Portland launched a 20-year effort to make significant reductions in CSOs to both the Willamette River and the Columbia Slough. The city signed an agreement with the state of Oregon to reduce CSOs to both waterways by 2011. Dean Marriott oversees the effort to clean up Portland's rivers. The combined sewer overflow abatement program for the city of Portland is a requirement of, of law. The city signed a legal agreement agreeing to do it and is committed to do it. But more importantly, I think the community of Portland is behind this effort. People of Portland want to see this river cleaned up. They're proud of this river. They want to be proud of it again in the future, and they want to point to it uh, with some excitement. It is an enormous undertaking. The combined sewer system serves more than one half of Portland's residents. 
Portland is using several creative engineering solutions to reduce CSO volume by almost 6 billion gallons annually. The city set out to tackle the combined sewer overflow program in a variety of ways. We've, we've done it on a sort of watershed basis. So if you live in Johnson Creek or the Columbia Slough watershed or Tryon or Fano, uh, we have a different uh, set of solutions for that part of the city. The foundation of the CSO abatement effort is a set of simple, relatively low-cost cornerstone projects that keep stormwater from flowing into the combined sewer system. The cornerstone projects include building separate sewers for stormwater in key neighborhoods, installing underground sumps to capture stormwater and let it soak into the ground, removing underground streams from combined sewer pipes, and encouraging homeowners to disconnect residential roof drains from the combined sewer system. The cornerstone projects are really the basics of how to keep combined sewer overflows from happening. Too much stormwater gets in the system, it overflows in the river. The cornerstone projects seek to keep stormwater out of the sewer system and therefore eliminate the combined sewer problem. On the west side of the Willamette, Tanner Creek once flowed underground into the combined sewer system. The city installed a new pipeline to carry clean stream water to the Willamette River. Sewage is sent to the treatment plant. The city of Portland is leading the way with projects to reduce CSOs, but there is a hands-on way for many Portland citizens to join the effort. It's called the Downspout Disconnection Program. Homeowners who disconnect roof drains from the combined sewer system have a positive impact on water quality. The houses that have been disconnected to date prevent nearly 900 million gallons of water from entering the sewers each year. A homeowner can make a really big difference right at home by disconnecting their downspouts out onto the water bushes instead of the sewer. And one single house contributes 22,000 gallons of water a year to the sewer system. And uh, we have had about 47,000 homes disconnect their downspouts. So one single house really adds up to a lot in helping protect Portland's rivers. I learned that by disconnecting my downspouts on my house, I'd be keeping sewage from my house and from my neighbor's houses out of our rivers. So. Um, made good sense to me, so I did it. Commercial property owners can help too by managing stormwater on their property. Commercial roofs and parking lots generate a tremendous amount of stormwater runoff. Building facilities like porous parking lots and bioswales will help reduce combined sewer overflows. At the offices of the Oregon Natural Resources Council, rainwater now stays on site instead of entering the sewers. We have a couple different systems all linked together. We have the rainwater hitting a new metal roof, which is nice and clean. It goes and gets stored in a subsurface uh, cistern uh, where it gets then put into the irrigation system. So we're irrigating with rainwater. When that cistern is full, it overflows into a bioswale. And so that ends up percolating back down through into the groundwater. Um, also, all the paving surfaces are now permeable. We have permeable pavers that cover the parking lot. They are designed to absorb most storm events in Portland. Most of them will just simply be absorbed into the subsurface of the paving, the sub-base of the paving, um, and then percolate back into the ground. As conservationists, we think it's important to walk our talk. And so what we're doing what we can do in our own backyard to protect those fish and wildlife that require a clean Willamette River. Now this will all grow back next year, you know that. Innovative stormwater management also offers great educational opportunities. Staff and students at Da Vinci Arts Middle School converted abandoned tennis courts into a water garden. It collects runoff from the school's roof and filters it in a pond and wetland. I wanted to create something here at school with kids that would be um, uh, practical and also beautiful and also uh, a place that could be, we could study nature in an urban environment. So it just kind of evolved out of that. We're using this as a, a kind of an outdoor school here at our school, year round. And we got a look at the bees like working and you could see them collect the pollen and stuff. And then we learned about a water system where you have like a lake and then a river and then a wetland. Learning all about like marshes and stuff because we're storing water this year. It's just cool. 
These cornerstone projects have already improved water quality. Although CSO construction on the Willamette River won't be finished until 2011, testing shows that the bacteria level in the river is decreasing. Portland has finished CSO construction on the Columbia Slough. In October 2000, the Columbia Slough Big Pipe began intercepting the sewage that once overflowed to the slough during rainy weather. The Big Pipe reduced overflows to the slough by more than 99%. Portlanders are beginning to rediscover the slough as a recreational and wildlife corridor. Kayaker Troy Clark paddled the slough when CSOs were still reaching its waters. After a rain event before the big pipe, anything that's flushed down the toilet would end up in the slough. So use your imagination. This, the water quality is much improved. Uh, I don't mind going in on a rainy day. Uh, before the big pipe, wouldn't catch me out here for two or three days after any rain at all. So that knowing that there's not bacteria going into the slough at any rain event is uh, hugely comforting. Sewage that once overflowed to the slough is now treated at the Columbia Boulevard Wastewater Treatment Plant. The city expanded the plant to accommodate the extra flow. The natural area adjacent to the facility was landscaped with native plants and a bike trail, providing recreational access to the slough. The slough itself is um, a remnant of what was here, and it kind of reminds us what we've lost in other areas. And it was important to have a bike trail that connects to the community because having the slough and the natural areas to the north here, it was important for the community to feel welcome to come through the plant area to connect to the trail. And so this was a way of getting the, the community into it. And the BES has done a wonderful job with this section in that instead of just making a trail, they've really made it park-like. And that has been a real uh, plus to what this uh, project was. The Columbia Slough Big Pipe was the first large construction project in Portland's effort to control CSOs. Now the West Side Big Pipe is reducing overflows from the west side of the Willamette River. Soon the East Side Big Pipe will complete the program to significantly reduce CSOs to the Willamette. Portland has never built a facility like the West Side Big Pipe. It extends for four miles, 120 feet below ground. Specialized boring machines excavated the massive 14-foot diameter tunnel. The West Side Big Pipe crosses under the Willamette River to connect to the Swan Island Pump Station, one of the largest sewage pump stations in the nation. The facility is 100 feet in diameter and 150 feet deep. It's the same height as the Portland building, but most of it is underground. The Swan Island facility pumps millions of gallons of sewage from the west side big pipe to the Columbia Boulevard wastewater treatment plant. The final phase of Portland's CSO abatement program will be the construction of an even larger east side tunnel. The east side big pipe will be more than 20 feet in diameter and will carry east side sewage to the Swan Island pump station. Completion of the East Side Big Pipe and the other projects by 2011 will reduce CSOs to the Willamette River by 94%. After 2011, combined sewer overflows to the Willamette will occur only about four times a year instead of almost every time it rains. It will be a critical improvement to this extraordinary river. I think I would put the Willamette system in the upper echelon of rivers in the United States just by sheer size. I think the Willamette River is, is important on a variety of levels. It's very important for the biological community of fish and wildlife from Spring Chinook to uh, kingfishers and blue heron that live in the Portland area to bald eagles and osprey that live right here in the city limits uh, for much of the year. Uh, it's very important that this part of the river uh, stay in as good a condition as possible. And I think that that adds to the, 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 the important role that the city can play in protecting the river. Portland citizens have long supported a cleaner environment. The CSO program represents a serious financial commitment for sewer ratepayers. The cost of the 20-year program will exceed $1 billion.
The combined sewer overflow abatement program in Portland is paid for almost exclusively by local ratepayers, businesses, residents, the people who live and work here. Uh, this is such a mammoth undertaking for the city, uh, over a billion dollars in cost. Uh, one would think this would qualify for some federal assistance. Uh, to date, there hasn't been much, uh, and that's true nationally. In the meantime, uh, the people of Portland are paying the bills and taking care of business and, and seeing to it that the Willamette is cleaned up. Although the investment is large, future generations will enjoy the results. Portland citizens will share cleaner water with endangered salmon and wildlife. The Willamette River will once again be the healthy centerpiece of the city of Portland. The Willamette is the reason that the city of Portland is here. Um, it's the reason why this city has become a great city. And I think finally the city is beginning to recognize that the community owes something back to the resource. What I see in the future is a clean and healthy Willamette River, not just in Portland, but throughout all of Oregon. For once, the city can, instead of turning its back on the Willamette, will embrace the Willamette, and uh, that will be truly a great thing to see.